Good morning, folks. This is Right Tools for Right Job by Noor Ali. Once again, we meet again. As always, I'm grateful to God, grateful to universe and cosmos. God bless you all. And thank you very much for liking my content. Thumbs up, giving me the thumbs up. And uh, likewise, thank you for the subscribers, newcomers, new joiners, audience, no matter where you are in the world. This is the content that can help you become a better analyst, better technician, a better engineer, a better person. That's the aim and that's the goal in life, is it not? Now, if, like me, if you have been in security, working as a contractor over a decade, well, I've been in IT for a long time, but in security, I've been doing this for a decade plus, right? So compliance comes under InfoSec. There's always a seesaw, we call it a seesaw, which is Chief Information Security Officer, and he runs the security, Information Security SOC, and he runs the department, right? And uh, that's compliance. On the other side is operational security becomes SOC, or a command center. Those who are in security, those who want to go in security, what happens day in and day out? Identification, authentication, system and communication, protection, management, risk assessment, certification, accreditation, security assessment, planning, system and service acquisition, operational. Operation is a SOC. What do SOC people do? Awareness training, configuration management, contingency planning, incident response. Incident response also a position. Maintenance, media protection, personal security, physical and environmental protection, system and information integrity, maintenance, false positive and private false positive. That is usually if you use Splunk or any kind of SIM, you'll have a false positive and positive. Uh, basically, it's alerts. That's what we monitor. Acceptable usage, security policies, security policies, guidelines are given by like we call it SOX, I, PCI, and HIPAA. All right, depending what your business model is, depending on there are other regulations out there by government, USA, and other countries that corporation needs to follow. So as a professional, you gotta always do care, act responsibility, doing the right thing, and follow the regulation. Follow the code. Uh, you don't want to get canned from a job doing the wrong thing or doing the stupid thing, right? Use your common sense. Risk management. A lot of people, a lot of people are in the risk management uh, group. Risk transference, risk avoidance, risk extensions, and risk reduction. Carry out appropriate risk mitigation strategy. Change management. If you've been in IT, you have worked with change management group. This is when you open a R RFC, uh, request for a change. Yeah, <laughs> request for a change, but you write the change. You are the SME lead. You're going to do the change. Change can be anything. It can be changing a router, changing a switch, change, changing a server, upgrade, update. And you have to call the change management. The RFC request for a change is already submitted to them. You call their 800 number. They say you, you can start the change, but keep in mind the time you promise to start the change, and the time you close the change, you have to do it exactly the same time frame. Otherwise, change management won't like you. All right, keep that in mind. All right, incident management. If you have an incident, you got to manage it, right? There's a whole team who does that. It's called a framework. So say an employee gets a virus, uh, a contractor in a company, and this laptop was connected to the system. Well, it's an incident, right? Well, the incident gets created, the SOC team or the information security team internally will talk to the user or the contractor. They will take the laptop. They will do all kinds of tests. They will, wherever the laptop was connected to on the network, the, the storage team will run uh, security scanners on the folders, make sure they're fully protected. And once everything is safe, then the, the employee or the contractor 
may have to take the security awareness training again. Keep that in mind, please. Executive appropriate incident response procedure. Very important to understand this stuff. In my career, I've seen many things happen. Capture system image, network traffic and logs, capture video, and chain of custody. I used to be a lead in a very big company and as a PC LAN technician under the, under not under, with the help of the security, physical security manager, I have done a lot of reporting. People breaking the law, people not doing this, so my job was to capture video, capture log file, create a report, and send it to the upper management as an IT guy. Uh, physical security is a different department. It falls under physical security director. And IT security is a different department in the big companies, and they both have to work together. All right? Keep that in mind. All right, next one explain importance of security related awareness and training. So we have directory, birth there, brute force, and rainbow table. I remember a couple of years back, more than a couple of years back, when I was a technical trainer, one of the guys was, when I was training the class, he said, Hey, can you explain me about rainbow tables? And he loved that section. So I did, and he was happy, and we moved on. Compare and contrast business continuity. What is business continuity? That's a disaster recovery exercise. Uh, for five years, uh, that was beyond 12 years ago. So five years when I was a PC land technician, we used to do every year a disaster recovery exercise. And the business, uh, business continuity is a, it's known as CBC. People used to come there and I used to do all kind of imaging. I used to set things up, the printers, the switch, bring the line, network line to that testing room. Then the business people used to come and test it. When the exercise was done, I used to do a DOD wipe on all the hardware because the hardware did not belong to us. Clean it up. It was verified and validated. And I returned back to my site, load the car with stuff that I bought from my site. Every year for five years. So that's what disaster recovery is. If you have done those kind of work, if you've done it time after time, you should know it. And you should follow the framework at all times. All right. Fire safety is important. So there are five types of extinguishers. Water, dry chemical, halon, carbon dioxide. You need to know this for the exam. Uh, in my time, and I took the exam, it came up. Executive disaster recovery plan and procedure. They are primary three types of backup. You got to know your backup, people. Full backup, differential backup, incremental backup. Okay, this may come. The storage guys do this every day. If you're a storage analyst, storage technician, not the storage like U-Haul storage I'm talking about or some moving company storage. No, this is data backup, okay? in silos and they use scripting languages for virtual backups so those who are in that world they know exactly what i'm talking about and then last not the last one i think it's last is a cia 2.8 okay so the next topic i will cover is threat and vulnerabilities so threat and vulnerability is very important. Most security analysts, security engineers, level one, level two, level three, they work on that. Either you're a threat hunter uh, or a threat analyst. Been there and done that. So I can, when I talk about this section in my next content, I will share some points from my experience so people will understand exactly how it works. Once again, thank you very much. Once again, share, learn, teach, and grow. While I'm going through this content, it is really helping me, and I'm, review, I'm going to review it for my interviews that are coming up because I'm going to be back in the market looking for another gig, as always. If you like it, you subscribe, please. Thank you very much, as always. We'll see you next time. God bless you all. Bye.